Ang kwento ng buhay ni Joseph, parang kwento ng isang familia ang Filipino. The family of Joseph had uh, undergone a lot of difficulties and they have traveled many, many uh, miles to cross a border to live in a foreign land. I have been doing uh, studies on the Joseph, um, on the life of Joseph this past many weeks. And today we're going to do the last chapter. Ang uh, alam natin, Joseph was sold in Egypt when he was 17 years old. At yung storya ng hari nangyari 1,800 years BC. So that's almost uh, 3,800 years ago. But the theme is always very, very relevant. Joseph was a favorite of his father, and because of that favoritism, his other brothers hated him. Binenta siya to become a slave in Egypt, where he became governor. Mahabang kwento, but he became governor. And when all the rest of the world around Egypt became hungry, everybody went to Egypt to buy grain. But under Joseph's leadership, Egypt was very, very, very amply provided with food and supplies, and the empire even became stronger under his watch. His brothers went to Egypt to buy grain, not knowing that the governor was the 17-year-old they sold 22 years before that event. Now they faced the governor, the governor recognized them, but they didn't. At napaka-dramatic na encounter, pretty soon Joseph revealed himself to them and then invited them to live in Egypt, at least during the famine. And so these brothers went back to their country in Canaan, fetched their father, and they all settled in Egypt. There was a happy reunion, and then Jacob, the father, died. And later on, Joseph would also become old and would meet his maker. And that's the chapter we like to look at today. And we always are sensitive to the lessons that we can learn from. The story is really our story. Genesis 50 is, will be our main reading. Dear God, we thank you that we can read stories where we see ourselves, where the stories that affect us today happened many years ago, thousands of years ago, and we can learn great lessons so we may be spared the heartache, the sorrow, and we can benefit, O oh God. That is what we ask, O oh Lord. Teach us to benefit from the story of Joseph. Continue to cleanse us, O oh God. Forgive us our sins. Make us whole. Enable us to see your face, to touch your hand, to hear your voice. Touch us so that we may be healed and empowered. Lord, be our preacher. Patahimikin niyo po ang loob namin. Gawin niyo po kami, Panginoong Payapa. Teach us to relax before your presence. Though you are mighty and powerful, let, help us remember that you are our loving Father. Heal us, empower us, teach us. In the name of Jesus, your Son, we pray. Genesis 50 verse 1, Joseph started crying, then leaned over to hug and kiss his father. At this point, yung tatay niya, so makabilang buhay na. This father was able to live for 17 years in Egypt after they had moved to that land, and then he died. And he had very, very uh, clear instructions that he didn't want to be buried in Egypt. He said, promise me, when I die, you won't bury me here. You are going to bring us home. Bring my body home to Canaan, our land that the Lord promised to us. So, so verse 1 pa lang, marami na tayong mga lessons, mga kapatid eh. You know, sometimes we ignore our parents. We think they'll always be there forever. But then one day, they meet their maker. And we begin to realize that they mean so much to us. Perform your duties to your parents while they are alive. They will not always be around. Do not be possessed by regrets once they are dead. So once you have love to show, show it. If you have love to express, express it. And if you don't have love to show, ask yourself why there is no love to show. Kailangan yung pagmamahal sa magulang gawin na agad. Maraming uh, sobrang nalulungkot pagtapos na. There are many people who lose a husband or a wife, uh, a child, a friend, a spouse. They never realize until the other person died that there will be a great vacuum to be left by these people, never to be filled again in their lives. And thank God because He can help us. Um, he can help us process our sorrow and He can help us cope. Pero dapat para huwag na lang tayo magsisi habang may panahon kayong mahalin nyo. Huwag kayong makakalimot sa mga magulang dahil na nag-asawa kayo o dahil na nagka-anak na kayo. Yan ang pinakamalakas magbigay ng amnesia. No? 
nakakalimutan ng marami yung parents once sa kasawa na sila. The priority suddenly becomes the wife, especially, or the husband, and the children. Of course, that is a very godly uh, duty and ministry to uh, care for your wife or for your husband or for your children, but never forget your parents. Gagawin nyo lang dapat yung inyong new marital status as an addition to your personality and to your life, but let that not subtract from your life your parents. Mahala gayon. At tayo, kahit na hindi tayong parents ngayon, magiging parents din, usually. And it's always important to keep this beautiful tradition. Genesis 50, 2 to 6. Joseph gave orders for Jacob's body to be embalmed. And it took the usual 40 days. The Egyptians mourned 70 days for Jacob. When the time of mourning was over, Joseph said to the Egyptian leaders, If you consider me your friend, please speak to your king for me. Just before my father died, he made me promise to bury him in his burial cave in Canaan. If the king will give me permission to go, I will come back here. The king answered, Go to Canaan and keep your promise to your father. Hindi naman madali yun. Malayo-layo rin biyahe, mahabang funeral procession. So whenever possible, you give your parents a decent burial. That happens, of course, when we're able to make something of ourselves. Because burials, funerals can be expensive. And if we are not able to uh, become fruitful, we might not be able to do those duties to our parents. And whenever possible, give them a funeral according to their wish. So, tinupad ni Tung Joseph yung uh, pangako niya sa tatay niya. Baga ma mahirap gawin kasi malayo. No? Keep your word. Keep your end of the bargain. Actually, a parent-child relationship is a natural uh, contract. It is even a covenant. No matter what modern society or modern education or culture tells you, there's a bond between a parent and a child. And that bond says, well, you're a child and you cannot take care of yourself, your parent takes care of you. When your parent becomes old, can, can, can take care of himself or herself, you take care of him or her. There's no way that should be changed. And there's no way... That can be changed. That's how life goes on and that's how the cycles of life and how the, the generations come and go. Pwede nating lagyan niya ng mga artificial replacements, homes, nursing homes, and things like that. But you know, you just die. Walang drama. Di ba? Walang saya. Hindi ka surrounded by your loved ones. In this day and age where everybody's come, coming and going, you'll never know if your last goodbye at the airport is the last. Here, this side of eternity. Dapat natin nirethink ang mga bagay na yan eh. Huwag tayo masyadong magpakain sa system. Because life, birth, growth, maturity, death, this is permanent. It will keep happening. Dapat tayong handa dyan. And it steadies us when we're committed to certain ways of doing things. Ang isang mahirap siguro yung alam mo na mamamatay ka but you don't know how and what will happen to you. Not much as much as what happened after your death but before. Yung ganun mga ministry, sobra kasi ngayon mobile ang mga tao, you're no longer assured that you'll be surrounded by loved ones if you're about to go. So parents take care of their children and children take care of their parents. Don't let any new school of thought change that. The same security that we give to our children is the same security they'll give to us. That's why it is important for us to make something of ourselves. Kasi kung ikaw ay fruitful, if you produce more than you consume, then you are able to love your child more. You're able to provide more. And then when the role is reversed, you're able to give to your parents more than what otherwise you will not be able to give if you are not productive. Hindi tayo nabubuhay lang para sa sarili. Kaya kung bata ka pa, you make the most out of your life. You say, this is my life, this is my body, hahampas ko to kahit sa ko gusto. But it's not true because we belong with each other. No matter how independent-minded you are, pag may nangyari sa'yo, those who love you will also be affected. And no matter how much you detach yourself from others, especially irresponsible members of our clan or family, when things happen to them, we also get affected. That's why it's good to be always responsible to others who share our lives, who share our time and our space. Hindi pwedeng sa sarili ka lamang mabuhay. Bahagi yan ng ating uh, noble in our holy transaction as human beings in a civilized 
people. Verses 7 to 9. When Joseph left Goshen with his brothers, his relatives, and his father's relatives to bury Jacob, many of the king's highest officials and even his military chariots and cavalry went along. The Israelites left behind only their children, their cattle, and their sheep and goats. It was a grand funeral. It was made possible because Joseph was some kind of an achiever. Napakahalaga na part ng motivation natin that we like to achieve is that so that we could um, be of assistance to our parents when they grow old. That we could give them a quiet departure. In fact, if a beautiful and dignified funeral, kasama yun ang cycle of life. Hindi basta iiwan mo na lamang at bahala na yung bangkay sa sarili niya. Pag ginawa mo yun, it might be convenient for you, but that same thought will eat you up and you'd think it would happen to you also. Masarap yung mga tao noong unang panahon, marami silang mga inaasahan na natutupad nga because people were still committed to tradition. But with the erosion of tradition, with the erosion of many uh, basic and traditional values, there's a lot of insecurity hanging over our heads. Hindi na natin alam kung anong pwede mangyari sa buhay natin kasi sobrang masyadong maraming variables. The way to answer globalization, the way to answer all of this uh, influx of modern thought is to cling on to some timeless traditions and values. It will steady us. Conventions have become conventions because they have proven to be effective. You cannot experiment too much with life because every person has only one life to live in this world. Eh, paano kung doon ka pa nag-experiment ng mga iba-ibang mga pamamaraan ng pamumuhay at pagkamatay, tapos sa pag-experimentohan ka na at nalugi ka? May mga bagay tayong dapat balik-balikan. Napalad tayo sa bayan na ito dahil kahit marami tayong uh, natatamasa ng mga comforts ng modern life, ang totoo niyan, we're still very tribal and very provincial. Metro Manila is the biggest province of this country. Akala lang natin mga, ano tayo, mga cosmopolitan, it's a very thin veneer, scraped beneath the surface, and you will see the indigenous soul, buhay na buhay. You have to work so hard to deny that. At yun, pwede natin gamitin to our advantage. Tradition steadies. Tradition gives comfort. At mahalaga yun, huwag lang yung mga needless and burdensome traditions. Kaya mahalaga tinitingnan natin how the people of the Old Testament lived. How did they go through the cycles of life? Verses 10 to 14, After crossing the Jordan River and reaching Ated's threshing place, Joseph had everyone mourn and weep seven days for his father. Pagtawid nila ng border, Kenan na. Ginamit na nila yung mga tradisyon ng kanilang lahi kasi wala na sila sa Egypt. The Canaanites saw this and said, The Egyptians are in great sorrow. Then they named the place Egypt in sorrow. So Jacob's sons did just as their father had instructed. They took him to Canaan and buried him in Machpelah Cave, the burial place of Abraham that Abraham had brought from Ephron the Hittite. After the funeral, Joseph, his brothers, and everyone else returned to Egypt. Yung lolo nila, yung magulang, yung kalolololohan, doon din nilibing sa kweba na yun. But good tradition. No? Ang ganda nang may mga family mo si Leon, pupunta kayo doon, eto yung kalolololohan mo, eto yung ganyan. You feel connected. Maraming insecurity ang mga tao ngayon because of the feeling of disconnection. Hindi mo alam kung saan ka galing, wala ka ideya kung saan ka pupunta. Tingin ng iba, this uh, advantageous yun because they feel free. No? They can remake their lives, they can uh, remodel uh, whatever paradigms they have, pero maraming nawawala pag yung mga tao sobrang kumakalas sa kaugalian. At pagkatapos ang libing, bumalik sila sa Egypt. Mapapansin nyo, ang dali-dali dali, dali nilang nagbalik. Another time, people will go out of Egypt to go back to this land. And that is the Exodus. You know how much it took them? 40 years. Sandali lang pala, pwedeng gawin yung biyahe. Bakit naging 40 years yung generation ni Moses 400 years later? Kasi matitigas sa mga ulo. But of course, that is another story. The story of the Exodus. But in a matter of a few days, they were able to negotiate this distance. Dahil ang ginagawa nila, it was in accordance with God's will. Try to read that as metaphor, if you like. Pagka nabubuhay ka sa kalooban ng Diyos, maraming dumadali. Maraming gumagaan. 
Pero pag sinusubok mo na lagi kang mareklamo, lagi kang lumalayo sa kalooban ng Diyos, bumibigat yung dapat sana magaan. Humihirap yung dapat naman madali. Kahit sa family life, masaya naman dapat. Bakit lumulungkot? Bakit yung relationship nagiging troublesome? Dapat naman peaceful. Isa lang yung dahilan. Pagka lumalayo tayo sa instruction ng Panginoon, hindi tayo sumusunod sa kalooban niya, gumugulo. Ang dapat sana ay tahimik. When people abide by God's will, the going is usually light and easy. Inilibing ni Joseph yung tatay niya, ang ganda-ganda ng libing. May isang lesson para sa ating lahat. Do your best, anak, ko ikaw yung anak, so that you'll be as healthy as possible, as wealthy as possible, as kind as possible, para ikaw ang maglibing ng magulang mo. Eh kung they're devil motorcycle adventurer ka, natanggal yung ulo mo at sumabit sa puno dahil kung ano nung mga gimmick ang ginagawa mo pag uh, biyahe. Namatay ka na agad, ito yung nanay mo, ililibing ka. It's unfair. It's unfair for parents to bury their children. Dapat ikaw ang magpakatino para humaba yung buhay mo para mauna yung magulang mo. Hindi naman dahil gusto mong mauna siya. Kundi gusto mong ikaw yung mahirapan, ikaw yung malungkot, ikaw yung maglibing. Ikaw yung mag-asikas. Dahil mahirap mamatayan. Yung mga anak-anak dyan na sobrang adventurous, kung ano-anong mga ginagawa nila sa buhay nila ng mga, mga halos ay mamatay sila ng mga activities, pagpasok sa gulo, pagpasok sa mga habits that kill their bodies, to be dependent on drugs, to get into very, very dangerous activities they call sports. Actually, you risk that your parents will be the ones who have to bury you. At nakakalungkot yun. Dapat tumatanda na sila, alam nila na pag namatay sila, may maglilibing sa kanila na anak. At kayo rin, kung kayo na yung tumanda, alam nyo na may mangyayaring ganon or equivalents. But if you're not careful with your life, namamatay ka agad, hindi pa dapat, sinong nahihirapan? Yung mga nagmamahal sa'yo. Meron tayong pananagutan na magpakatino. Meron tayong pananagutan na mag-ingat para humaba ang buhay natin at tayo yung managot, pumasan sa paglilibing sa ating mga magulang. Unless, of course, something beyond your control happens. But there are kinds of activities that really endanger one's life. Do your best para ikaw maglibing. At kung makaka-afford ka pa na may mga musiko, may mga ati-atihan sa libing, masaya, di mabuti marami kang pera. Kaya yung mga uh, anak dapat, mag-aral ko nag-aaral, magtrabahang mabuti para mapaginhawan nyo yung mga magulang, hindi lang yung mga sarili. Magandang ambisyon yun, no To live right, to live well, and to live long. To keep safe and stay safe. To be healthy and as much as possible, wealthy. Para ikaw ang magtataguyod sa pagtanda ng yung mga magulang. O ng iba pang mga tao sa buhay mo. Nagawa yun ni Joseph in spite of the odds. Can you imagine at 17, he was sold into slavery? You could be bitter all your life. You could be angry at life. You could self-destruct. So, sabi mo, nagkaganiganito na ako. So, lalastasin ko yung pulso ko. Iinamin ko lahat ng Clorox. Diba? Sisipsipin ko lahat ng rugby sa buhay. Ilalagay ko lahat ng lason sa buhay ko. Dahil total, ganito yung pamilya ko. Alam nyo, pagka yung kayo, hindi gusto ng mga kapatid nyo, hindi kayo mahal. Pag nawala kayo sa mga magulang ninyo, at pagka feeling nyo pa yung magulang nyo, hindi mabuting magulang, hindi kayo mahal. Aba dapat kayo na magmahal sa sarili nyo. Eh, hindi na nga kayo mahal ng mga kapatid nyo. Hindi nyo pa mamahal sa sarili nyo. Kato na nangyari kay Joseph. Itinapo ng mga kapatid, ibinenta to become a slave. He ended up governor. Because he did things well. When life becomes hard, don't be bitter. Be better. Success is your best revenge. Pagka nineneglect ka, hindi ka paborito. Maraming ganun, di ba? Gano'ng karami sa mga pamilya natin, dysfunctional. Lahat. Every family has a skeleton or many skeletons in their closets. Maganda lang yung appearances niyan pag sila-sila na they know their own sorrows. At alam nila yung mga PR lang ng pamilya nila. Alam nila yung mga totoo. Huwag kayong sumamay ang loob pamilya nyo. Ganito, ganyan. Lahat ng pamilya. All of these families in the Old Testament were dysfunctional. Kasi pa, hindi rin naman sila tunay na halimbawa. Dapat sila katuruan mo lang na, oh, we should not be like them. Joseph was the favorite of the father and the father was not shy 
to show his exaggerated favoritism. That divided the family. Those who were not favorites hated the favorite one. Sa family natin, kumisan may parang star material. And sometimes our parents, you know, are just very, very expressive about how affectionate they are to this star. Diba? May sister ka, lagi nakukuhang maid of honor. Ikaw, maid of horror. Hayaan mo siya maging maid of honor. Diba? And don't live up to your horrific image. Improve it. Marami talaga mga ganyan na ang bilis-bilis ng isang kapatid mo talaga accelerate. 16 years old pa lang, tapos na ng medicine. <laughs> tapos ikaw, 27 years old, medicine dropper. Kasi drop ka ng drop. No? So, anong gagawin mo? Magagalit ka sa sister mo? Maraming ganon. All their lives galit dun sa sister kasi mas maganda, kasi mas matalino, kasi this and that. Hindi ginawa ni Joseph. Bawat hirap na itinapon sa kanya ng buhay, sinikap niyang baligta rin. Sipin niyo si Joseph at a tender age of 17 became a slave. And then, in no time at all, became the administrator in the house where he served. Tapos, because he refused the amorous advances of her female employer, the woman who was rejected cried rape. And for having been a decent man, he was thrown into jail. Kung yung marami sa atin yan, naglaslas na uli kayo ng pulso. Di ba? Ang bait-bait ko na nga, nag-jail pa ako. So ano gagawin mo? Mang-aaway ka, awayin mo, saksakin mo yung katabi mo, magalit ka sa mundo. Pero ano mangyayari sa'yo? No. Joseph became administrator of the prison again. Pag gusto nyong ayusin ang buhay nyo, kahit anong gulong ibigay sa inyo ng planeta na to, maaayos nyo rin. It only takes time. Don't cooperate with forces that like to destroy you. Don't self-destruct. Naging administrator ng prison. And this terrible disadvantage became an advantage kasi yung kanyang naging fellow prisoners were servants of the Pharaoh. Although matagal siya bago naalala na ibulong sa Pharaoh yung pangalan niya nung lumaya na itong mga servants na to, pero naalala rin siya in time. And because of that, he became governor of Egypt. Pagka kayo ipinanganak na may disadvantage, lahat tayo pinapanganak na may disadvantage. It's what you do with it that counts. Hindi ko mo ipinanganak ka mahirap, mamamatay ka na mahirap. Ang daming mayayaman ngayon sa Pilipinas, saksa ka nangihirap nung araw. Pero nagsikap sila. Yun nga mga ipinapanganak ng mahirap, ng mayaman, ang later on, nagihirap eh. Alam mo naman ang sabi nila, the first generation builds the wealth, the second generation enjoys it, the third generation sells it. So hindi ko may pinanganak ka mayaman, advantage ka na, you're made. No, it doesn't follow. What you do with your wealth, what you do with your poverty, will define your life. Kasi kahit may mga circumstances tayo, inevitable, God has given us free will. And God resides in each one of us. There's the Spirit of the Lord just waiting to be asked, to be followed, so that we could be more and more like God's Son, the Lord Jesus. Pagka mayroong mga disadvantage, turn it into an advantage. At yan ang ginawa ni Joseph. And because of that, he was able no, to bring his father to the grave, not only decently, but grandly. Verse 15, After Jacob died, Joseph's brothers said to each other, What if Joseph still hates us and wants to get even with us for all the cruel things we did to him? Yan ang problema. Sila kasi yung nagbenta sa kapatid nila into slavery, eh namatay na yung tatay. Sabi na baka tayo gantihan. Patay na yung tatay natin. No? A parent's death could really change things. So responsible parents will try to fix things up before they go, especially if they have already some discernment that they might be going soon. Enjoy family unity and peace while parents are still around. Things will really change when they go. Marami sa inyo, mga young couples, may mga asawa kayo, isa, dalawang anak, tapos pag Pasko, nung araw, tradisyon nyo, uuwi sa parents nyo, pero yung wife nyo o husband has other ideas. Habang buhay yung mga parents nyo, dun kayo. If nature would take its course, they will graduate ahead of you and go to their next life. That's when you do what you want to do. Habang nandyan pa sila, pagbigyan nyo. Ngayon, 
kung pareho kayo ng asawa mo na gustong nasa parents pagkapas ko, edi this year sa parent na ito, next year sa isa. O kaya, noche buena sa magulang, media noche, kung saan nyo gusto magpunta. Pero alam nyo, kung buhay pa mga magulang nyo, you're very privileged. Samantalahin nyo yun. Sometimes it looks like a chore that you always have to be there because you don't really always want to be there. But consider it great privilege. At habang nandyan sila, give them the dignity, give them the honor and the importance. Kasi hindi naman laging ganun. Pahalagahan nyo yun. Itong magkakapatid na tatakot sa multo ng mga pinaggagawa nila nung araw. Immediately, we learn a lesson here. Don't ever harm a brother or a sister. Hindi ko sinabing i-harm nyo yung kasin. But between the two, kasin na lang. Kung talagang meron kayong kailangan gawin, pero dapat wala. Kasi yung kapatid nyo, kapatid nyo yan forever, whether you like it or not. Magsumpaan man kayo, hindi pwedeng hindi kayo magkita pag may ikinakasal, pag may inililibing, pag may binuburol. Ang hirap na may kaaway kang kapatid. Yung matatalinong tao, hindi nila ginagawa yon. Huwag kayong makipag-away sa kapatid nyo because you're godly. But if you are not really that godly, at least be intelligent. Mahirap sarili mong kamag-anak, kaaway mo. Kaaway mo, pinsan mo, magkikita-kita rin kayo kahit anong mangyari. Ang totoo niyan, dapat nga wala kang kaaway. Pero kung may gradations na hindi dapat, unang-una kapatid. Mahirap yon. Una, ito yung break your parents' hearts. Kasi siyempre, unang nagdurusa yung magulang pag yung mga anak niya hindi magkakaayos. Tapos, ang ipapabaon mo pagka sila sa mga bilang buhay, sama ng loob, nag-aalala na magulo kayo. Huwag. Itong ginawa ng magkakapatid ito, nagbenta na kapatid ito sa slavery just because they didn't like the brother. Hanggang ngayon, nagigilty sila at natatakot. At yung mga, sa palagay nyo, kayo yung ibinenta, kayo yung kinawawa, kayo yung naapi-api, pag umasenso kayo, huwag kayong magiganti. Bakit? Kasi yung pinaasenso kayo ng Diyos, naipaghiganti na kayo nun eh. Doble higanti pag ginawa nyo, babawian na kayo ng Diyos niyan. Ang sabi ng Panginoon, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Hindi bagay sa magkakapatid yung nagyayabangan anong araw, ang yabang-yabang mo. Ngayon, mas malaki na yung pera ko. Tapos display ka ng display ng mga kung ano-ano mong mga accomplishments. Huwag yung gagawin sa kapwa nyo, kapatid yun. Whether you like it or not, meron kayong bind. Ang ganda nga sa Tagalog, eh, magkapatid, ibig sabihin, you belong to the same piraso, pinuto lang dahil naputol yung puso, di pinanganak siya, ipinanganak ka, pero kayo magkapatid. Napatid lang by the distancing of the childbirth but you belong with each other. It's a beautiful word. Kaya yung utol, utol, ibig sabihin magkaputol. What? You belong to the same peace. Pagkaaway nyo, kapatid nyo, kahit magtigas-tigasan pa kayo dyan, ang totoo, nasasaktan din kayo. Kapatid mo yun eh. Ikaw din yun. So, ang mahalaga, ito lang, kung ito lang yung matandaan natin sa lesson natin today, mga kapatid, kung may kaaway yung ang kapatid, tama na yan. May kipagkasundo na lang kayo. So, mo, nakakapagod makipagkasundo sa kapatid ko. Pero nakakapagod din makipag-away. Pareho lang pagod yan. Ang gawin mo na, yung mabuti. Yung maganda, yung bunga. Kung meron dito ngayon, may mga kaaway kayo mga kapatid nyo, kasamaan nyo ng loob, din nyo kinakausap, may sama kayo na meron kayong tampuhin, anakit, galit, poot, buhi. Di ba? Kung ano-ano man yan, iwan nyo na dito yan. Yan ang gusto ng Panginoon, kaya ka din nila dito. Huwag yung nadinig nyo dito sa alampas din doon. Paano ka pang nakinig? Kita nyo si Joseph hindi nagtanim. Kayang-kaya na niya eh. Governor siya, nagdating kanyang magkakapatid niya para bumili ng grain. Kaya niyang ipakulong lahat. Pero timping-timpi siya, gusto niyang yakapin. Pero later on, ginawa din naman niya. Pagka kayo binless ni Lord, huwag kayo maghiganti. Binless na nga kayo dahil naapi kayo eh. Maghihiganti ka pa, di natanggal na yung reason para ka i-bless ng Panginoon. Just look good. Looking good is the best revenge. Tama na yun. Yung pabutihin mo rin yung kalagayan ng iyong mga kapatid. Bakit ang kulit-kulit ng ganyang message? Kasi maraming magkakapatid, sila yung magkakagalit. Kung minsan yung pinakamalalalim na sugat ng puso mo against your own brother or sister. Eh. Dahil nga nagkaroon ng mga inggitan, nagkaroon ng kung ano-ano mga contest nung araw. But you are related forever. Be wise. 16 to 17, Genesis 50. 
So they sent this message to Joseph. Before our father died, he told us, you did some cruel and terrible things to Joseph, but you must ask him to forgive you. Now we ask you to please forgive the terrible things we did. After all, we serve the same God that your father worshipped. Gusto na nila talaga makipagkasundo. Hindi natin alam how sincerely because now they have no choice. Maging mabait kayo habang may choice kayo na hindi maging mabait para walang doubt kung sincere yung kabaitan nyo. Ibig sabihin, kung kayo yung nagbibigay, mabait pa kayo, ang ganda nun. Kasi kung kayo yung humihingi at ang bait-bait nyo, natural. Kahit magbait-baitan, gagawin nyo ngayon dahil humihingi kayo. So, when you are empowered, when you have the upper hand, be kinder, be nicer. Because your sincerity will be more obvious. It will shine through. So here, the nervous offenders use the names of their father and of God. Sabi niya, patawarin mo na kami, totally isa naman Diyos na sinasamba natin. At tayo ay magkakapatid. Hindi naman nila inisip yun bago nila ibenta yung tao. So, ibig sabihin lang yan, bago tayo gumawa ng anumang makakasama sa ating kapatid, pag-isipan niyo ang mabuti. Pag-isipan niyo. Misan walang kakwenta-kwenta yung pinag-awayan niyo nung araw, pero hanggang ngayon, nasa puso mo pa. Magpatawad. At mga parents, ayusin niyo mga anak niyo bago kayo gumraduate. Kailangan ng ipamana niyo sa kanila kapayapaan. Siyempre, kung minsan ang mga magulang may favorite. Meron naman talaga eh, dahil pareho kayong tatlo ang puyo, so favorite mo siya. Di ba? Magkamukha kayo ng korte ng baba, favorite mo siya. Ito naman yung mga magulang eh. No? Pero huwag niyo nalang gawing obvious. Kung sa kalooban nyo man, may nararamdaman talaga kayong ganun dahil talaga mong mas thoughtful ito, mas mabait, mas masunurin. But don't make it obvious because you will destroy your children for life. Yung mga bata na lumaki ng feeling nila, hindi sila mahal, hindi sila favorite, they are scarred for life. Ngayon, ito pa yan. Kung meron tayong kasama ngayon dito, ganyan ang sentiment nyo, hindi kayo minahal nun, ba? underloved kayo, unloved, but buhay pa kayo ngayon kasi minahal kayo ng Diyos. Kasi kung nagkulang man ang pag-ibig yung mga tao sa paligid natin, nagpadala naman ng Diyos ng iba. Diba? Kung hindi man talaga ang Panginoon directly ang nagmahal sa atin, you know, your mere existence and survival is a testimony to God's love for you. Kaya huwag na magdamdam. Kasi talo yung nagdaramdam, talo yung naghihinanakit at nagagalit. Alisin na yan para tahimik ang puso. One of the best things in life is to have a peaceful heart. Napakasarap nung payapa, katahimik ka, pero habang may galit ka, may pagdaramdam, nandiyan yan. Many people, all their lives are just compensating for their perceived uh, poverty or lack of things when they were young. That's why the Lord gives us a new life. 2 Corinthians 5.17, If anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. Make it effective. Put it to work. Dapat talikuran na natin yung mga nakatali pa tayo sa past na nagpapahirap lang sa ating kalooban. Make peace with your family members as soon as possible. At dapat mas mag initiate yung powerful, yung mas merong kakayanan, kasi mas meron siyang influence to effect such reconciliations. And remember not to do anything extreme that will divide your family. We are not perfect. We commit mistakes. Pero napipili din natin kung alin sa mga mistakes ang magiging careless tayo and commit them. At pero yun talagang no, never. This is a no, no, no. Dapat meron kayong listahan, mistakes I will never do against my family. At kung nagawa na natin, humingi tayo ng tawad, makipag-ayos tayo. Kasi kung mabubuhay ka pa ng next 50 years, tapos magkaaway pa kayo in the next 50 years, can you imagine that irritant? Para ka naglalakad yung sneakers mo, may mga tamtak sa loob. Pag may mga kamag-anak kang kagalit, hindi naman naiiwasan eh. Kaya tuloy maraming okasyon, hindi ka nalang pupunta dahil pupunta si ganun. Can you imagine that kind of omission in your life? We should be wise. Life is short. We must maximize our pleasure and happiness. We must minimize our pain and we should do the maximum good. Parang ganun ang buhay natin, hindi binibilang lang sa number of years, but sa quality of our life. So when Joseph heard this, that his brothers were still appealing to the name of God and to their father, 
he started crying. He was sad and sorry. He was disappointed that his kindness is underestimated. Akala ng mga brothers, mabait lang siya dahil buhay pa yung tatay. Ngayong namatay na yung tatay, natakot na sila. Pero talaga namang taus-puso yung kabaitan sa kanila ni Joseph. Verse 18, Right then, Joseph's brothers came and bowed down to the ground in front of him and said, We are your slaves. And we like to think that this time they are sincere. This is the dream of Joseph. Remember that the grains would bow down to him. 22 years ago, ikinagalit nila yon. Now, they do it with full appreciation. Salamat na lang, very erect and very high yung grains in Joseph. Kahit sila nagbaw, but this height, this success, this glory, saved them from hunger and from poverty. Kung may kapatid kayo, member ng family nyo na star material, obviously, kung mas matalino kaysa sa inyo, mas mahusay, mas magaling, huwag kayong maingit. Celebrate it. Support your brother and sister who is a star material. Kasi pag naging full na yung star niya, maliliwanagan ka rin kahit paano. Hindi mo kalaban ang kapatid mo na sumisikat, gumaganda ang buhay, umayaman, huwag mong kakaingitan, kasi may benefit ka rin doon, lalo't kung maganda ang relasyon nyo. At kung hindi ka man niya bigyan, at least hindi mo na siya kailangang tulungan. Di ba? Malaking ginhawa na rin yun. Kaya huwag kayong maging, don't, don't uh, stunt the growth of your brothers and sisters. Don't compete with your brothers and sisters. Celebrate their every victory because it is also yours. Especially if you cannot really be victorious in that area because you are designed to be victorious in another area. Kung minsan naiingit ka lang sa kapatid mo dahil gusto mo labanan siya sa basketball, eh, area niya yon. Pero sa ganchilyo naman, ikaw ang panalo. So, <laughs> di doon ka naman makipaglabanan. So, kanya-kanya ng talent yan, kanya-kanya ng galing. Do not measure yourself by other people's giftedness. 19 to 21, but Joseph told them, Don't be afraid. I have no right to change what God has decided. You tried to harm me, but God made it, it turn out for the best so that He could save all these people as He is now doing. Don't be afraid. I will take care of you and your children. After Joseph said this, his brothers felt much better. Okay, mag-alala. Hindi niyo ako kalaban. Kakampi niyo ako. Alam niyo kung bakit nakaya ni Joseph laging maging positive kasi lagi siyang nananalig sa Diyos. Sabi niya, wala naman akong ginawang masama. Alam naman parusahan ako ng Diyos. So hindi ito parusa kahit mukhang parusa. Wala naman akong ginagawang masama. I was sold into slavery. Gumawa nga ako ng mabuti. I refused to go to bed with my master's wife. I went into prison. Gumawa ako ng mabuti. Napunta ako dito. Hindi ako magtatampo sa Diyos kasi ang Diyos marunong. Nandito ako. Meron siyang purpose. If you are in this temporary state of inconvenience, if you are in this state of temporary pain and sorrow and isolation and aloneness, don't leave God out of the equation. Lagi kayong magtiwala, lagi kayong lumapit, at yung pananalig niya sa Panginoon na siya marunong, alam niya kanyang ginagawa, yun ang magbibigay ng liwanag sa pwedeng pagdimla natin na isip. Yun ang magtutuwid sa parang liko-liko nating daan, yun ang magpapalakas sa atin kahit lahat ng nasa paligid, pinipili tayong pahinain. Always put God in the equation. In whatever situation you are now, God is there. God knows. Just be patient. Continue to please God and in time, you will be delivered. Napaka-timeless ng mga, napakahalagang mga lessons sa buhay nitong si Joseph. God makes it turn out for the best. God does not cause harm. But once done, God can turn the harm into a blessing if you would let Him. Hindi ka naman ina-assign ni Lord na halimbawa ay mapahamak, bumagsak sa test. Pero kung bumagsak ka na, nalagay ka na doon, magpapasakop ka sa Diyos and you will do things God's way, God will lift you up. Pag may pangit na nangyari sa buhay mo, don't cooperate, huwag mong lalong papangitin. Pag nahulog ka sa balon, huwag kang maghukay ng maghukay dahil lalalim yun. Pero may mga ganong tao eh, pag may nangyaring pangit sa buhay nila, sila na yung magdadagdag ng kapangitan. No. Always lift yourself up because God will always enable you. Kaya lang naman tayo lumulubog ng lumulubog, tayo naglulubog sa sarili. Hindi kayo lulubog ng Diyos. Sabi niya, I know the plans I have for you. 
plans to give you hope, a future. And the Bible says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love Him. So yung pagtitiwala natin na ganyan, tatandaan nyo kung may nangyaring pangit, hindi na yan lalala unless palalain nyo. Contain it. Stop the infection. Contain the situation and then begin to move up. It won't be long before you are back on your feet. Verses 22 to 23. Joseph lived in Egypt with his brothers until he died at the age of 110. Joseph lived long enough to see Ephraim's children and grandchildren. He also lived to see the children of Manasseh's son, Machir, and he welcomed them into his family. Before Joseph died, he told his brothers, I won't live much longer, but God will take care of you and lead you out of Egypt to the land he promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now promise me that you will take my body with you when God leads you to that land. Bunso yang si Joseph, second to the bunso. Pero nauna siyang pumanaw sa kanyang mga kapatid. Yun ang grace sa kanya ni Lord. Hindi siya naglibing ng kapatid. Siya ang ililibing. Grasya yun ha. Kahit ikaw ang mauna. Pero sabi na hindi bali na, ako na lang mahuli. Diba? Kayo na lang mabless. Mauna na kayo. Sabi ng iba, pero mahirap maglibing. Mahirap maulila. Kaya, blessing din yung nauuna ka. No? Lalo't 110 ka na. Utang na loob naman. Ano? 110 na eh. Yung kaya mga kuya niya, ilang taon. But remember, his father died 147. Let's not argue kung yung numbers na yan eh, accurate or not. Let's just take it for what it is for now. Pero, binless siya ni Lord. Hindi siya maglilibing ng kapatid. Pero sabi niya, mauuna na ako sa inyo. Ipangako niyo. Pag nagbalikan kayo to the land of our fathers, Bit-bitin ninyo ko. 400 years later, in the Exodus, nung umalis sa Egypt sila Moses, dala nila yung mga buto ni Joseph. Kita niyo yung continuity. Ang sarap nung alam mo kwento ng pamilya mo. Alam mo kung sa kakasali at hindi. Para nagkakaroon ka ng very deep sense of belongingness and security. Kahit siya umasenso sa ibang bansa, naging makapangyarihan at umaman, di niya nilimot ang talagang sarili niyang bayan. Isang magandang lesson din sa atin na napakadaling makalimot sa sarili nating bayan. Marami nga, two months and three days pa lang sa Amerika, hindi na maroon mag-chigalog. <laughs> ha? Naumpog ka ba sa bato, sister? Bakit hindi ka na marunong? Meron pa ng Filipina, nadinig ng tenga ko sa Philippine Center sa New York. Meron tayong event, so marami mga Pilipino pupunta doon, nanonood ng uh, exhibit. Tapos may nagsabi sa kanya, Excuse me, are you Filipina? Alam mo sabi itong Pilipinang to? Sabi niya, Was. Was? <laughs> Nakakahibang yata talaga kung minsan yung makasakay sa aeroplano. Ano? Kahit hulugan yung una mong sakay. Si Joseph sabi niya, Pag umuwi kayo, dalhin niyo ako. You know, Crazy Horse, the American native, the American uh, hero, the Native American, sabi niya, my land is where my dead lay buried. Ang ganda, no? Inaagaw ng mga puti yung continent ng Amerika. Eh, yung mga ninuno ng mga puting yun, sa iba naman nakalibing yung mga ninuno nila. Eh. Di ba sa England? Kaya sabi niya, hindi naman ito lupa ah. Dito ba nakalibing mga ninuno nyo? That's why the land is sacred. Kung tagabaliwag bulakan kayo, yung mga magulang nyo doon namatay, doon makalololohan nyo, naging lupa sila doon. ba banal ang lupa in a way? ba yung mga pumupatas, mga kukuko mo, malay mo, si Urduha yan. ba So, minamahal mo dapat yung lupa, yung bayan mo. Kasi yung mga ninuno mo nandun, kasama sila ng elemento, my land is where my dead lay buried. So like his father Jacob, Joseph gets the balik bayan each. Sabi niya, uuwi uli ako. Huwag lang sa balik bayan box. Gandahan nyo ng konti. Genesis 50, 26. So Joseph died in Egypt at the age of 110. His body was embalmed and put in a coffin. Nilinaw yon para madali yung retrieval. Because when this 
Itong lahi kasi ng Israel na ito, maaapi sila sa Egypt later because there is going to be a new dynasty. Magkakaroon ng panibagong partido na magro sa Egypt. So hindi na uso yung lahi ni Joseph na dating heroes at dat minahal ng mga Egyptian. So magiging slave sila at yun naman yung panahon ni Moses. When God will ask Moses, bring my people out, take them back to Canaan. No? So ibang mga kwento naman yun. So the brothers even outlived Joseph. No? Sila ang nag-ayos ng funeral. The brothers benefited greatly from Joseph's accomplishments. So don't be insecure if you have an, if you have an accomplished brother or sister. Kung hindi mo kayang kopyahin yun, makijoin ka na lang. Diba? Makisali ka sa fun, sa party, para hindi ka mapag-iwanan. And help your brother or sister dream and have ambitions and carry out great ambitions. Huwag kang kontrabida sa buhay nila. Dahil pag nagtagumpay sila, lagot ka. At pag nabigo naman sila, ikaw ang sisisihin nila buong buhay. Be supportive and be kind. Do not be envious sa mga accomplishments. Ngayon, bakit blessing na si Joseph, ang dami niya mga kamag-anak na siya lahat ang nagkargo, siya lahat ang nag-ako, siya ang nagpasan sa kanila. Ang daming lahi yan, kinuha niya mula sa kanilang bayan, pinatira niya sa Egypt. Siyempre, ipinakisama niya yan sa pero. Akala niya naman libre yun. Huy, libre tayo sa doktor na yun, kaibigan ng kuya natin. Pero kahit ka hindi pinagbabayad ng doktor na yun, yung kuya mo naman na nagbabayad in many ways. Walang libre. Walang libre. May kumakarga nun, may nagpapasan. Si Joseph, ang dami niyang pinasan, pero we call him blessed. Bakit? Alam niyo yung mga dahon ng mga puno. Magtataka ka, ang taas, taas, taas ang mga puno. Bakit yung tubig na nandun sa lupa, nakakaakyat hanggang doon sa kaduluduluhan ng dahon, defying gravity? Do you ever wonder? Of course, high school biology tells us, di ba? Na merong tinatawag na transpiration. What is transpiration? I'm sure you all remember that. Di ba? Tandaan-tandaan nyo ang inyong high school biology. The pressure outside the leaves make the moisture inside the leaf evaporate and get out of the openings in the cells. So, nagkakaroon ng transpiration. That little pressure creates an energy that makes the cell of the leaves get liquid and all other nutrients from the next cell between the that dried one and the roots. And paulit-ulit yung process na yun. Dahil na nawalan ako ng tubig dito, nag-evaporate, hihingi ako sa next cell at magbababayan hanggang root. Kaya umaakyat yung tubig. Ang hirap yata ang iakyat ang tubig. Ang tataas ng puno, no? Bakit umaakyat yung tubig mula sa ilalim? Transpiration. Anong kinalaman niyan sa atin? Kuminsan, ang pakiramdam niyo, kayo'y lagi yung nagbibigay, kayo'y lagi yung nagdadry, kayo'y lagi yung nag-evaporate dahil may binibigyan kayo sa labas. Pero kung wala kayong binibigyan, walang transpiration, hindi rin kayo makakakuha. It's a blessing pag maraming humihingi sa inyo dahil bibigyan tuloy kayo ng Diyos nang ibibigay nyo sa kanila. It's a blessing pag maraming sumasandal sa inyo dahil patitibayin kayo ng Diyos para hindi kayo gumuhong lahat. It's a blessing pag maraming nanghihingi sa inyo dahil the Lord will provide. Yung iba sa sabila, kung hindi humihingi sa akin yung nanay ko, kung hindi humihingi yung kapatid ko, hindi humihingi pa maki, ang yaman-yaman ko na sana. Ito yung isipin mo. Kung walang nanghihingi sa iyo, baka hindi ka binigyan ng Diyos. Dahil sosolohin mo lang pala. Don't ever think na kung mo nagbigay ka ng nagbigay, nalugi ka. Dahil nga, bigay ka ng bigay, nagkaroon ng transpiration. Sabi nga na matatanda, may humahawak ba ng palayok na hindi mauulingan. So if you're an agent of blessings to others, many of those blessings stay with you and remain with you. And just because you were an agent and a channel, you too benefited. Huwag niyong isama ng loob kung meron na kayong dapat sanang na-save tapos nagkasakit yung kapatid niyo, ipinagamot niyo, hindi niyo patuloy savings, baka nga kayo, kayo binigyan eh. Kasi gagamitin kayo ni Lord na blessing sa mga kamag-anak niyo. Huwag niyong ikasama ng loob kasi kayang palitan niya ng Diyos. Teka muna ha, ang kausap ko yung nagbibigay, hindi humihingi. Kasi baka mamay, hihingi ka, ate, bigyan mo ko, remember, transpiration. No way, ha? No, ang kausap ko yung giver. Huwag niyong i-abuse ito yung mga nanghihingi lamang. It is important for us to be kind to those who give to us and to be considerate 
But if you are the one on the giving end, consider this. The Lord could be blessing you precisely because you are a blessing to people around you. If you change the formula and stop giving them, you might stop receiving from heaven. It's a ministry. It's a whole attitude. Lalo sa ating pamilya, hindi ka naman pwedeng umasenso mag-isa lang. Kahit gano'ng kakaasenso, kasi kat meron ka laging pamilya dyan na naiwan. Huwag mo naman silang iwan. Joseph loved his brothers and sisters and his brothers and their children. Though really, actually, may atraso pa sila. Ang daming lesson. Alin dyan ang para sa inyo? Remember, para ang pagkain, ang, ang salita ng Diyos, para ang buffet. Kunin mo yung para sa iyo. Kunin mo yung makakabuti sa iyo. Kung lahat makakabuti sa iyo at kaya mo, take it. What blessing does God want to give you today from this chapter? Dear God, we ask you, teach us to have the wisdom to allocate for ourselves what we need to allocate. Kung ano ang magandang lesson, Lord, na lesson para sa amin, tanggapin namin. Be it forgiving. If there's anybody here, Lord, who needs to forgive a brother or a sister or a family member or a friend, maybe a sweetheart, a spouse, teach us to humble ourselves and forgive now. Give us the wisdom to see that it's godly to forgive. And it's also beneficial for us to forgive. Kung kami naman yung mga nagkaroon ng kasalanan sa mga kapatid namin at mga mahal sa buhay, tulad ng kapatid ni Joseph, turuan mo kaming humingi ng tawad. Turuan mo ang bawat isang anak dito, Panginoon, na maging mabuti, maging mabait, maging successful, mabunga, para hindi lang sa sarili nila, kundi mapaginhawa din nila ang kanilang mga magulang. At turuan mo rin kami mga magulang na kamukha ni Jacob, hanggang mamatay na lang, siya pa'y nagpapamana sa mga anak niya. Hindi siya umasa. He provided well for his children, even in his old age. And he left a very organized family, so that they could go on loving each other, even He already went to you, O God. Sino ba kami sa kwentong ito? There's a Jacob in each one of us. There could be a Joseph in each one of us. And those brothers, there could be some of those in us. Ituro mo sa amin, Lord, ang mahalaga, huwag mo kaming hayaang umalis sa bulwagang ito na hindi tumanggap ng pagtutuwid, pagpapala, pagpapalakas, pagpapakain ng aming Espiritu. Ituro mo ang aming mga banal na pananagutan sa isa't isa, so that we will do our part and we will get our share. Father, teach us. In silence, brothers and sisters, let's be alone with God. Seek God's mercies and God's wisdom so that we may benefit. Let's bow before the Lord and in silence hear the Spirit of God. Lord, as your people bow before you in silence, minister to each one of us. Give us very personal applications of this golden and timeless lessons.